All right, what's up with the people? I'm checking in with this Facebook Live because I just had a very good conversation, right, with some family of mine. Um, you know, he grew up in, in the Gullah Geechee Corridor, which is a place where I lived when I was a child, when I was a kid. So I've experienced different cultures it's kind of a culture shock. It's very interesting stuff because I sometimes listen to a clown <laughs> who is speaking. Well, I don't listen to him, but I overhear what it is that he's talking about. And he basically tries to put it out there like he's so very cultured because he's been to different places, different countries different societies, etc., right? Different states, different cities. Now I've done the same, but I don't tout it. So there's no need for me to be like, oh, I know more than you do because I grew up over here or because I grew up over there. No, that might be the truth, right? But I also know that in the United States, there are people from everywhere Right, so there are people from other cultures that go home to their motherland. Not home, but you know, they go to visit their family in other countries, in other nations. Right, I've been to Mexico. I've been to a few places, but there's no need for me to brag on that. That doesn't make me any smarter or less intelligent to tout that fact. Now, the conversation that I was having with family, right? Someone that I've known since I was a child who has a different perspective as to the way things are. And, and it should be that way, right? But we're having a discussion. And uh, basically, I was telling him that there's no group of people that's going to get me to go against who I am. Right, my blood, my ancestry, right? So, in certain instances, as part of an African mystery system, right, which I'm absolutely have been, I, I absolutely have been initiated into a specific mystery system of African origin. And then there are people that will say everything is of African origin, right? True and false, semantics, and it goes back farther than Africa, right? So I won't say that everything came from Africa. I will say that at one time, the continental plates were in different positions. And there is a relationship between who we know Gaia to be and who we know Pan to be. And everything goes back to those two particular intellects, right? On one hand. However, that's not anything that I care to go into right now. So I've been initiated in certain African mystery systems. All right, so I'm fairly well protected internationally, and I love it. I don't have to go anywhere. The people are here, right? Beautiful Asian people beautiful Eurasian people, right? Beautiful Caucasian people, right? Not to put Africans last, right? And I could say very disrespectfully that I'm saving the best for last, right? But that's an untruth because I was just explaining that there's nobody that's going to get me to go against my ancestors, right? So as an, and some people feel like that's what's wrong with people of mixed heritage being initiated into African mystery schools. But that is what that is, right? The Cubans are the ones who kept the Kumi tradition alive and created the interest for certain people to even look to Nigeria and Ile Ife, right? To then become part of what they believe to be the original Orisha mystery system. And then I have explained in previous recordings of videos that even in India, there were places called Orissa and Odisha, right? 
Then there's the connection between the Cholas, the Chola dynasty, Mama Chola Wenga, right, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, right? So in Chicano communities, right, we know the women to be called Cholas. Then there was the Indian dynasty known as the Chola dynasty. And good old Christopher, right, Colombo, he felt that he had discovered India when he arrived here, right? So there's no need for me to over embellish or over talk about the old world order or old mystery systems. Some of these history books that I have, it says right in the front cover that those books are the result of Freemasons and Freemasonry. And they're history books that are written in 1886, 18. 72, right? They're, they're old enough. They're beyond antiques, right? If you're speaking towards antiques, you're speaking towards antiquity. And that only takes 100 years. However, I've digressed. That's not the point. So, I was having a discussion with some family, right? He has a, uh, a slightly different genetic makeup than myself. That's fine. Ain't no problem. We're still family, right? And I was explaining to him, because some people have a problem with white people, right? They have a problem with Caucasians. And they don't understand where the Caucasus Mountains are, right? That's Georgia, right? Bush. Anyway, <clears throat> some people don't understand the way that shit works. And the concept, the scientific concept of genetic bottlenecking, right? So that's science. And then how the Holy Bible speaks towards cataclysms that cause genetic bottlenecking to take place. There's no avoiding it. It's what happens. Right? And it has a lot to do with the Rotary Club. That's what I was explaining to him. Not so much, right? But the universe we are in works sort of like a gravitational clock. So gravity causes the clock to move. Right, the gears spin, they rotate. Good old human beings, he let me know. Well, he, he was saying that the human body's uh, composition between earth metals and water is 70 30. Right, we be having some beautiful discussions. I mean, gorgeous. All right, it's, it's something where if I wanted to beg you to donate to my PayPal or my Cash App, I could just call him and just talk. Right? And we just give the show a name and bam, we're doing it big time. Right. But I explained to him that there is there's no way for you to divide me amongst myself. Right. So there's this old saying that says a house divided cannot stand. And I'm in possession of my vehicle. Right. That is the way that it is. So. I was basically explaining to him like. I'm never going to just hate white people. Why? Because I have European DNA. Right? And I'm part of an African mystery system that says you honor your ancestors. Right? It doesn't say just honor Africa. It doesn't say just honor African ancestors. It says honor your ancestors. Right? So for me, there are Native American ancestors. There are Egyptian ancestors, North African, Spanish Right, or Iberian, because some people don't get that before the existence of Spain as a nation, that area was called Iberia, right? So the same as whatever land we're on right now, right, in the United States, wasn't called the United States before what, 1776, right? It must have been called something else because it was here. However, people don't understand that the names of these countries are modern, right? So they, in many instances, do not outdate the people, right? The people are the ones that give the name to the place and majority rules in that regard, right? So somebody that must have had sort of like a Nicene Council thing where they sat down and they drafted the constitution, 
right? The same as some people sat down and they decided which scrolls would go into the Bible. I was explaining to family that, uh, you know, basically the earth has experienced repetitious cataclysms and that the Bible itself is on repeat. He was telling me like, you know, he believes that the Bible is a book written for the future, sort of like a Nostradamus sort of thing. And I agree with that. And I let him know that like, absolutely. That's a book for the future. Some of that stuff has not happened yet. However, that stuff already happened. Right. That makes the Bible an amazing book. So what I was explaining to him was how there are stories on repeat. So in the book of Genesis, man was doing fine and dandy. Next thing you know, a woman said, hey, look at this. Fucked everything up. Right? There are people that believe that. You hear that story again with Samson and Delilah. He's chilling. Strongest motherfucker in the whole world. Pardon my English. All right? Woman comes along, messes it all up. All right? Same thing with Solomon and Sheba. All right? So got King Solomon. He's bad mofo. Running things. Power over all genius. All right? Or gin. Or genies. Woman comes along. The reason for this devil worship right, is this woman who introduced this man to unclean spirits. Right? Spirits of filth and decay. Now, some people don't read the Bible like that. And then I have this book that's part of a series uh, called New Age Interpretations of the Bible. Now, if you can't read the Bible and understand what's in that, if you need a pastor to translate for you what your Bible says, you might not want to get that book that I just mentioned because you want to understand it. However, the Bible is written in a way that allows an intelligent person to understand in an abstract fashion exactly the way things work. So I was telling him about genetic bottlenecking, right? And then there's material written in the 1800s, I believe, late 1800s, by a woman, a Russian woman named Helena Petrovna Blavatsky. She was a member of the Theosophical Society, and she's already broken this shit down, right? So we have these root races that exist over epics or very long periods of time. And there's a genetic bottlenecking that takes place based on cataclysms, right? And then the human organisms attempt to survive in this realm over the ages or throughout the ages. So it is said that presently by Helena Petrovna and company, that what we are experiencing is the Aryan epic. Right? That every human on this earth right now is Aryan. Because that's the root race, that is the stock that we bottleneck from. Now there are people that will disagree with that, right? They'll say that the Aboriginal man is in different enclaves on the earth, and that's true. And then there are people that say white people came out of the caves and blah, 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 blah. And, you know, you let them say what they say. However, there are previous epics, right? So there's the Atlantean epic, right? Which is feasible if you consider continental drift as well as rising and falling sea levels, right? And then previous to that epic, there was the Lemurian epic, right? Now, why do I bring that forward? Because I know people who swear by the lords that they are Moorish, right? that they are Lemurian, that they come from Afro-Asiatic stock that existed in the Pacific, the Polynesian Pacific, right? Some people will say it that way. 
as opposed to the Asian Pacific. And there are people who don't understand how that works. So these are people who are claiming descent from the Lemurian continent, which is supposed to be a lost continent similar to Atlantis. Right, the same as there is the Atlantean race. Then you have Mazatlan, right, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And these are root races. These are root stock. You move into each epic based on cataclysms, right? So the Holy Bible says that there was a flood, right? Now I know people who believe that that flood caused for all white people to go into caves and suffer a dark age, right? Similar to the medieval period where people also suffered a dark age. There are people that believe that it was black people that drove the Caucasians out of Africa and into caves. However, so me and my cousin were discussing the fact, and we agree upon the fact that actually what probably took place was there was rising sea levels Right, what is called a great flood that caused people to seek high ground, right, in order to survive. Now, it's difficult because religion is always tied to racism. Right? Racism always tied to religion. Right? It doesn't matter if it's spirituality or nouveau sort of religious doctrine, ideas, beliefs, but it tends to be that religion is tied to race, right? So you're not Jewish if you don't belong to these 12 tribes, right? There are people who believe that. There are people who believe that everyone on the earth is Jew or Jewish and people who believe the exact opposite, right? That only the chosen people Right, which is a Chinese word, right? That ain't an Asian word. Because all I hear is Cho and Zen, which makes me think of Buddhists, right? Because English is a very bastard language. Right? It is a, a bastard tongue, right? A, a confusion language. So there are some Arab words, there are some. Or, or, or rather oriental words right there are what else European old English words old angles right etc etc probably some African words and terms sounds or whatever and then we have this babbling situation where you have you have phonetics semantics and syntax Right, <laughs> All of these words, if you step away from the spelling and you just listen to the sound of it, has something to do with two different religions. That would be Islam and Judaism, right? And then there are people that believe that those are the original societies and civilizations, period, point, and nothing else. All right, so what is syntax? Right. You, you, if you pay your taxes, you might be paying attention to syntax. Right. I, I could do it like these remedial, funny, goofball sort of people that try to take the discussion in various directions. Sometimes where they don't apply. Right? But maybe they want you to think, who knows? Or maybe they're just remedially educated. So they're kind of using that ingenuity that goes along with not having an education. And there is genius that, you know, obviously does its thing in that manner. Doesn't need to have a collegiate education or a standard education in order to come up with ideas and ideologies that people believe are genius or ingenious, right? And genius basically means dim it, right? It's genealogy, et cetera, et cetera, and the gin in them, right? And then there are agents and there are Gentiles, right? I'm very good at speaking Babylonian, 
for the record. That is what that is. So I was talking to family and we was going over everything, right? And so of course, as a dark skinned individual, it's like the black gene is the dominant gene. So you can't argue with it, right? It's, it's impossible to argue against that. That's science. That's Mendelian genetics. And you cannot argue against it. That's the way things work. However, the conversation is stuck on like the superiority sort of thing, right? Who has the superior intellect? Who has the superior society? And so what I was explaining to him was that civilization, society, humankind, whatever you want to say, however you want to say it, is cyclic. Right, So there are cycles where there are great times of intellect, intelligence, technology. Then something happens, whether it's a cataclysm caused by the people or an act of God that causes humanity to regress. Right? Hopefully there are people that survive that, that are still technically, spiritually, intellectually advanced. And those are the people that keep things going, right? So at one point, that was the people of China, right? They made sure to survive certain cataclysms by going into the mountains and building castles, keeping the technology going. Right, the waters recede, they come down the mountain. <laughs> they come down the hill, they keep it going. Each time that happens, you move into another epic, or you move into another type of humanity. Right, so it could be that you have the Cro Magnon people, right? They are physically, genetically, and in every other way different than humankind is now. Cataclysm happens, whether it's wars within this type of people or that type of people or whatever it is, because there are people that believe that Homo sapiens sapiens were the beings that ran the Cro-Magnons off of the earth, killed them all because they were inferior. Now, there could be something to that, right? There are people that say that the entire continent of Australia was cleared by Europeans. All right, it's difficult to step away from this sort of talk. However, I try to steer clear of the blame game, right? Blaming one type of person over another type of person for all the problems in the world. But that's what some of, you know, I'm having a discussion with family. And so some people, right, people I care for, they honestly believe that all the problems of the world are because of white people. Or that every malady that has been suffered by people of color is because of people who lack melanin, right? It becomes difficult. Some people believe that that melanin pigment, pigment between the layers of your skin or however that shit works is tied to intellect, right? Gives you superpowers, right? There are people that believe that. Now the question becomes, what is a superpower? Is a superpower... You know, uh, a telekinetic, psychokinetic, psychic ability. Or is a superpower a motherfucking nation that can't be beat? And then what does it mean when you can't be beat? Right? Maybe you're free. Maybe you're a part of a free nation. That is indeed a superpower. Right? I mean, I didn't make it up. 
<laughs> there were other people that were speaking on these points before myself, so I'll ask again, what is a superpower? Right? Is a superpower your intellect, your ability, your physicality, your athleticism? And here's another thing. As I say those words, I wonder why it is that those words are part of the names of specific gods and goddesses. All right, so you have athletics and you have Athena. Right? You have, you know, words like calisthenics, right? You have these words that by themselves have a meaning, right? And then as part of other words, they mean this other thing. That could cause you to wonder if the English language or the bastard language that is English, right, a Babylonian tongue, is or is not the word of God. However, I've digressed, right, so I'm going off point. And I don't like to do that too much, so we'll get back on point. Now, as I was explaining to my cousin that there are people with different genetic profiles based on different epics, right? And that the theosophists have gone over this stuff, right? Even down to the point of egregores and ascended masters, right? So some people know what an ascended master is, and some people don't. Some people know what genius is, some people don't. Some people know that the word genius is tied to the word genie and genealogy. And that it basically means demon. Then there are people that believe that language itself right, was scattered. Right, We were talking about that. So we were talking about Nimrod. Right? And the scattering of humanity and the use of different tongues or different languages. Right? At one point, it is said that everyone spoke the same language. There was a man that tried to build a tower to heaven. God didn't like it. They don't say which God, right? Well, yes, they do. I guess it's Yahweh, right? Didn't like it. Scattered humanity. So why do I call English a Babylonian tongue? Because there are elements from every other language or every other type of people involved in the phonetic makeup of the English language. Now, I don't know that that's exclusive to English. Right? It could be that there are other languages that are similar. Like, I know for sure that when I read Vietnamese, the language, I can see other words and names of other gods in their lingua as well. Right? So, maybe the process is on repeat and it's based on epics or it's based on who's dominating what region at what time. So, we know that there was a time when Genghis Khan and Kublai Khan ruled over the Eurasian steppe. Who are Eurasians? <laughs> right? Who are your Asians, man? <laughs> so, there was a period when a certain group of people ran the entire Caucasus region as well as your, what is known as Eurasia, right? So that's gonna be Russia, that's gonna be all of the stands, right? Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, et cetera, et cetera. Afghanistan, and then 
the words that are tied to those societies, those civilizations regularly. I mean, it's there's no stepping away from it. It's standard. Now, what is my point? What is the point that I'm making? There are people who don't understand two words. Those words are fusion and confusion. Right? Now, when I think fusion, automatically the other part of my brain thinks fission. Right? And that has everything to do with science, which was one of my strong suits. Right? I don't know if you can tell or not, but that was one of my strong suits. So is law. Right? But I'm speaking to our science, so there's fusion and fission. Right? However, I would like to point out that there is fusion and confusion. Right? Which takes us back to Kubli and, Geng and Genghis in them, right? Because we were just talking about cons. Right? Why are, convic why are convicts bad guys? Well, because the Golden Horde was also full of bad guys, right? Nomads. I heard someone earlier today talking about uh, Visigoths and Vandals, right? So if convict is tied to the word con, which is a group of people, or a dissension from specific people, then how so would these other words not work in a similar fashion? It's very interesting stuff. I mean, the people who go to college to study language, I'm sure that they are on a journey for real, right? They are people who, if they do have this abstract sort of thinking, right, this, this way to cross compare in the most eloquent of ways, that even they start to either realize certain things on their own or they start to ask questions like how does this really work right and then there are people that know that the evolution of mankind or, or even societies and civilizations themselves tend to be traced based on language not simply your race right but language that's how they know where you've been, what, what, what you're native to, right? What society you belong to. Because normally you will speak that language, right? So there's some people that don't believe that you can be Hispanic unless you speak Spanish, period. Doesn't matter what your DNA says, right? You are not Hispanic if you don't speak Spanish. It's a mother tongue, right? The same as you have mother clads and mother haplogroups as that pertains to genetics. Right? So haplogroup L, haplogroup V, haplogroup U, etc., etc. They can trace you back to one common ancestor normally. And that explains that, right? Well, that has a lot to do with maternal genetics, right? But then there are linguistic uh, applications involved, right? So some people, they'll laugh. If, if they hear you say ling too many times, it don't matter if you say ling ling, right? There are people that say, that's a penis, right? There's no stepping away from it. Ling ling ling. <laughs> right, that was for my Chinese people that like to speak Chinese. Right. Ling ming ling, ling ming ling. Not trying to be funny, but obviously re-emphasizing the point. So you have these different societies. You have these people who had different influences, right? Different trade agreements. All right, so I'm sure that NAFTA wasn't the original free trade document, right? Because we know that the Silk Road absolutely existed. And that was a very oriental situation, right? It combined, it connected the societies of the Mediterranean to the so societies of 
the Far East. And that was the known world. All right, as soon as you get to the edge, to the water, you're like, damn, ain't nothing else. <laughs> right? This is it. Now, what is the point? Well, I've had a remedial education, right? So I'll say I dropped out of high school, right, because of the British criminal codes, <laughs> right? And, uh, you know, I got a thug mentality. All right, we'll say that California has taught me near to everything that I know. All right, that goes out to my Indios and my Indias. And then if you speak Spanish, what does that mean? That means in God and in Goddess, depending on how you choose to dissect that particular vernacular. See how good I am at this? I'm pretty good at it. I mean, gosh. Okay. <laughs> the problem becomes is if I over explain this sort of stuff, it can become confusing. It can become difficult to decipher the cipher text, right? And then me, I personally have a Rosetta Stone, right? It's magic, right? It's genius. There were some good people that taught me to enjoy reading and writing and arithmetic. And I love them for that, right? Not like they was like, oh yeah, you guys enslaved us back in the day, so we ain't teaching you nothing, right? They were like, this kid is a fucking genius. Let's put him in a gate program. Let's put him in this program. Let's put him in this program, right? My environment caused me to go to that other collegiate institution, right? We'll call it a Cali school, right? Because Cali is the home of the gangster mentality. I mean, is it not? This shit has to be fascinating to some people. I mean, I don't see how it couldn't be. All right, so, so we got the thug life. We got the thuggy. We got the, we got the cholas and the cholos and Cali, fool. All right? Now, we also got the mafia, right? And I'm still there, right? That's Mediterranean. All right? So I'm not going to Africanize this stuff. There's no need for me to do it. The people of the Mediterranean were mixed people. Some of them African, some of them European, some of them Asian, just like these here United States, baby. And if you don't notice how these civilizations come to be, come to coalesce, it causes for very advanced intellect to appear. Right? Instead of holding the keys to one secret or two, the entire puzzle is available. Then you have those people like Vinnie Van Gogh that are able to dissect things in a very abstract fashion. Right? That's a beautiful thing. Now there's this one dude, I'm going to say his name, right? His name is Sea Bear. Right? Sea Bear B. He has a Turkish name and talks shit about Europeans all day long. To what he does. Right? But his name is Sea Bear Bay. Right? It's, it's, it's turkey in the straw. It's very, <laughs> he likes to talk about straw men a lot. Straw man purchases, etc., etc. So I can't help but speak on the turkey in the straw. It's very funny stuff. Right? So if, if, you're, uh, if you're Cherokee, right, you might be Jewish. Right? And the people who know that, I mean, so they know that, that, that Wild Bill and them, right, of Cherokee fame, had a Muslim name, a Jewish name, and an English name before the establishment of modern, you know, institutions. And that's a reflection of something. They still try to figure out how the Melungeons came to be. Right? They don't want to discuss that shit too terribly much. Who is they? That's everybody. Black, white, yellow, Puerto Rican, and Asian. The same as the Appalachian people, right? So you have these people that come from the Appalachian Mountains, and they are very Melungeon, right? Which means that they are tri-racial. Right? They have three different ethnic or cultural genetic markers, right? They're not, they're not half-breeds. They're not mulattoes. 
right? Like me, right? I'm not a mulatto, right? I'm Melungeon, right? I have three, more than three, different races that make me the beautiful. I mean, oh, come on now. Boom, right? The very handsome individual that I am, as well as intelligent. I mean, you know, I could thank the Wu-Tang Clan and all these other uh, rappers for making sure that I paid attention in history class. But that would be giving them credit they don't deserve because I have been going to the library since I was a small child, right? I was being abused by my mother. So for me, reading books was like uh, an escape from reality sort of thing. And maybe I never found my way back to reality, right? That's that's. That's a soul-to-soul -soul pun right there. Did you get it? It's like, back to life, back to reality. And I grew up where people had Gumby haircuts, these aerodynamic fucking haircuts. Like, you want to see us uh, uh, doing some aerodynamic shit? Look at this flat top. That ain't flat. <laughs> just, just like this earth that isn't flat, right? Except for it's a Petri dish. So it is flat. You can argue... A thousand points, right? You could say their culture exists in a petri dish. And it does. Culture exists in a petri dish. And as such, the world is flat. Scientifically speaking. You don't want to argue against me, see bear. Because you're a Turk. Man, you're a turkey. And that's not no disrespect to my Eurasian Turkish friends. I'm saying you're a fucking turkey. All right? That's what the old men used to call us and shit when we were in, in juvenile camp. They say, you jive turkeys. You keep calling each other niggers. You drive turkey. Excuse that word, right? But Sea Bear likes to call people ninjas. And I am that. Right, I already said, I might be from the ghetto. And you don't want no problems with me. Right? However, I'm going to stick to the point intellectually, right? That's an important thing to do. So, some of these white people you don't like, it was their grandmothers that made sure that I knew how to read and write. It was their grandmothers that knew that I was having a hard life at home. Right? You, you, <laughs> you know, it is what it is. Right? You can't, it's, oh, it's a European education. It's because you know everything that the European taught to you and blah, blah, blah. Man, them people are my grandparents the same as, that's other people's grandparents. So you're trying to divide me amongst myself? Because I've already told you that there's a saying that goes, a house divided cannot stand. You're trying to make me choose one part of my heritage over another? Or are you trying to get me to, to feel like the European parts of myself are less adequate than the Africanized parts of myself? Right? Because I told you the Wu-Tang Clan was in my classroom, right? So they've been telling you about killer bees. This isn't a new concept. Even though we're talking about new species. Right? I'm, I don't ascribe to Pan-Africanism. Because... Everything ain't about pan where I come from, right? So that's the goat and what? The panners, right? The gold rushers, right? The sooners or the boomers. Everything I know is not based on division, right? Or dividing myself. Division is just one aspect of mathematics, right? But there's division, there are fractions, which is another part of division, right? There's algebra, right? There's calculus, 
And then some of my people come from Calcutta. Right? Some of us are human calculators. That's what we do. I'm at the little free library. You can't see it, but in this society we have here, they bring the library to you. They put the books right there in the little book house. It's very cool. So I'm closing this recording. I will say that uh, today's message was brought to you by coffee <laughs> and Starbucks. Man, normally I don't go there. Well, actually, yeah. It's, it's kind of a, a, of a love-hate situation because... I enjoy Starbucks. I really do. I go there. However, you know, it's, I love Yamaya, right? However, some of the mermaids aren't so very friendly. I don't know why. Some of my Moorish maids are not so very friendly. They're still trying to crash and sink ships. All right. That's for those that understand the law of the land and the law of the sea, right? Because some people can't travel and it's all because of mermaids. Believe that. In closing this particular recording, I will say that all orientation is not sexual. Right, so you understand what a sexual orientation is, but you don't understand what an orientation is? Now that's a question. I'm not telling you you don't understand what orientation is. However, I'm going to tell you emphatically that if you understand what orientation means, you may or may not owe that knowledge to the Orient. to the mysteries of the oriental schools, right? Everyone does not have the Western education that Seabear tends to limit his people to, right? Some of us have oriental educations, some of us have occidental educations, and some of us have international worldwide reach. I don't have to get any Nigerians on my personal feed in order to prove such a point because I've already been initiated. All right, there are regents that know who I am, right? I guess I should see bear a little bit, big up myself, right? No, the, we'll just put it this way, right? Ogunwusi, right? The, the king, the monarch of Ile Ife. Right, he knows who I am. How about you? That's what you always do, right? They know who I am. They know who I am. I guess people beat up. So, <laughs> I mean, not really do that. However, there's no need for me to lie about it. Right? The Lakumi people go directly back to Ile Ife. So that shouldn't be difficult to believe. And it shouldn't be assumed that I'm embellishing or embezzling anyone. Now, I'm back and forth here because of the lights, right? <laughs> Some people don't want to hear a voice that is out of darkness. All right, so if I talk to you in the dark, it's not stimulating to your senses. You can hear me. Right? You know I'm speaking, but you might lose interest. However, if I figure out a way to stimulate your orbitals, your eardrums, and possibly the skin that you're in, right? Heard somebody saying that shit. I'm in my skin, man. I'm in the skin that I'm in. Well, sure. Nice. I think every person is in their skin. Right? And that doesn't make you special. So what makes you special? Well, if you've taken special education courses, you might be a fucking genius. Because I heard through the grapevine that Albert Einstein was a person they tried to say was retarded. 
They try to say that that man couldn't learn. Right? But he figured it out, didn't he? Fusion, confusion, and fission. Figured that whole shit out, right? The same as I figured out what phonetics has to do with Phoenicians, semantics has to do with Semites, and the moral of that word syntax. Right? That's how you're reaching, man. You're, you're going, you're overdoing it. You're going too deep, too in-depth into things. And I will say to you, Qua, don't hate on me. Right? I'm not, I don't have to be a Freemason. <laughs> Even though I have families who, family members who absolutely were that or are that. All I have to say is Qua. Right? It's an Abakua society, man. The original dudes in the pointy hats and the chess sets. Right now, if you don't know what Abakua society is, it's on you, buddy. Doesn't mean that I don't know. Right? That goes out to Sea Bear again. So it doesn't really matter to me who listens to what I say or who doesn't. It doesn't really matter to me if I have a thousand views in a video or just two. Right? I'm connected to the Ethernet. Am I not? Would you like to argue against it? Would you like to say that right now? The Ethernet connection is not doing the damn thing. Maybe you don't know what that means. That's your fault, right? Oh, no, it's my fault, right? San Andre and them. If you don't know what it means to be connected to the Ethernet, maybe you should study the writings of Helena Petrovna. And be careful, because Alice Bailey and them, they're right there. And it could be that you get accused of wearing a skirt when you're Scottish. <laughs> it could be you, that you get accused of wearing a skirt when you know that when in Rome, you need to do as the Romans do. And then I've already discussed Romans, right? You better be careful because you could fuck around and end up a galley slave. And I can keep doing that. It's like gangster rap, right? It's like I just 15 times said, be careful of who you accuse of wearing a skirt. Right? They say the Egyptians wore skirts. Right? You didn't see them dudes with sarongs on? Weenie wraps? <laughs> right? To, to those people who, who want to argue against what I say in, in this, uh, you know, battleground hip-hop sort of uh, styly, you know what I'm saying? To those people that don't know that if there were no Jamaicans doing their thing, there were already poets. So you could never say that hip hop wouldn't have existed without Jamaica, right? Because poetry is not new. And this just so happens to be poetry in motion, right? I'm very good at it. Now, here's the thing about it. Do I have attention deficit disorder? They tried to say that when I was a kid, possibly, right? Very, very brilliant. Do I have bipolar disorder? Probably, right? Also, I have two different lobes in my brain, right? That are polar opposites. Right? And if we continue to talk about it, we'll have to discuss Carl Jung if we keep going and going and going, right? I'll be name dropping all night. Except I won't be name dropping rappers. And I won't be name dropping pundits. Pundits. Right? I'll be name dropping philosophers. Because I've already told you, I have the philosopher's stone. 
Some people say, no, no, you don't. That's the Kaaba. You ain't never been to Mecca. And I'll tell to you, just because I ain't never been to Mecca don't mean that I'm not Meccanized, man. Maybe I'm Mexican. As opposed to Mexican, right? No, maybe I'm Meccanized. Maybe where I am right now is Mecca Mesa. Right, maybe. I don't have to argue about the Philosopher's Stone. Because... The Kaaba ain't nothing but a close relationship to the Kabbalah. How do I know this sort of shit? Well, I've told you, it's genius. All right, so maybe thought. All right, maybe, uh, I don't know, Harakuti Minatuti or something like that flows through my genealogy, my Gentiles. Right, maybe I'm just a gentleman. Or maybe I'm the chosen one. Right? To my killers. <laughs> right? To my killers. Right? Maybe I'm just the chosen one. Maybe I'm part of, a, of, of an elite fraternity of white people. And I'm not trying to be funny right there. Maybe we're, maybe it's a brotherhood. Right? Maybe it's an essay that I'm writing. And maybe I owe my essays to my Essenes. Because people believe that I'm always making a scene. Right? No, it's an overactive brain. And some people will call that maniac or maniacal, or manic, right? A manic stage. The beautiful thing for me is when I go into that particular cycle, based on the moon phase and the seasons, which I was just discussing with some family in that Gullah Geechee corridor, but maybe when I experience maniacal, uh, psychopathy, <laughs> right? Maybe the way that I deal with it is unraveling the mysteries of this realm. Like Alexander, right? It's a Gordian knot. And I am a Gordian, right? I'm a Gordon to my Scotty dogs. You know what I mean? To my Scottish bagpipers <laughs> All right no really it's a Gordian knot not to say that I'm not a Gordian but it is a Gordian cycle and see what I did was I just walked to the front of the line I took a sword and I split that thread All right that's how it is said that Alexander the Great became the conqueror of earth, right? We say that Alexander conquered the known world. How did he do it? Ingenuity, right? He was brilliant. Not to speak the word skin, but I'm brilliant too, right? I have a uh, golden hair, right? Some people say it's red, right? It's actually golden. Which could or could not have something to do with uh, the killers. Right? The golden child. And the chosen one. Maybe they're both the same people. Right? Now, as I round this corner, because I already said that I was going to close this particular recording. So now I'm speaking towards the builders and the masons, right? As I round this corner, I'll say to you that just because your fez is not square doesn't mean that you're the only person who wears a fez. 
because every person that graduates from high school and gets a cap and gown gets a fez, right? They're on their square, right? The square is on their head, right? Maybe that makes you a box head. Who knows? I've known a couple gang members named Boxhead. So, it's very interesting stuff. However, so I got one viewer right now. That's cool. Whoever it is, I love you too. And understand that it takes a whole lot to be ingenious, right? Ingenuity is not the most simple of concepts to decipher. Right? Because you got concepts and you got Shaka Khan. Right? Some people will say, well, you're all over the place. It doesn't make any sense. And that's why you need to pay attention to all of these videos. You need to look at them again. And listen. And see if you can't understand what it is that I'm presenting from another angle. Right? That's what being a surveyor is all about. Right? That's what makes you a gentleman in the age of Gentiles. Right? That's what a chessboard is. Right? Those are Gentiles. You don't believe me? <laughs>